make it clear what this case is about and what it's not about. Uh, Mr. Martin, who uh, currently has a default judgment against him, uh, in this case, uh, had originally had a case, as I understand it, uh, against him in federal court for 17, where he, uh, or a $17 million judgment was entered against him approximately. Is that right, Mr. Capua? Yes, Your Honor. Is that right, Mr. DeBose? That's what I understand. And uh, this case is not about relitigating that case. Do you guys understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. The, what the issues in this case are gonna, going to be is to make a determination of what assets are Mr. Martin's and which assets are not Mr. Martin's uh, to make a determination. This lawsuit is about whether or not any assets can be collected on that $17 million verdict. Is that correct, Mr. Capua? Yes, Your Honor. Is that correct, Mr. DeBose? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Let's go ahead and start off. We've had extensive pretrials on this, uh, so we don't need to revisit all of that. We've pre-admitted quite a few exhibits. I never got the list from you, Mr. DeBose, about uh, what your pre-admitted exhibits. Did you email us? I, I, I've, I filed it uh, last night, uh, that, and I thought I had also emailed the copy to you. Um, I will do that. It, it has been can filed. You, can you email, have your assistant email Rhonda that, and uh, that would make things go a lot more smoothly. So yes. Let's go ahead and start off with uh, opening statements. Uh, Mr. Capio, you may begin. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. Your Honor, as, as you have correctly stated, uh, uh, this case involves ownership of videos that were on the futuristic hub channel and are, are, and are uh, still on that channel, as well as the Wildcraft channel. And there are other channels as well involved in this litigation, which are Creamworks and Animation, Top Trends and, and Blocktastic. I will state in the beginning, Your Honor, that the primary focus of this litigation concerns the videos on the Futuristic Hub channel and the Wildcraft channel. Oh, well, with that said, Your Honor, oh, here's what we believe the evidence is going to show. And Your Honor, before I continue, your Honor, what the evidence is going to show in this case is that Mr. Brian Martin was very calculated and cunning with the way that he has operated his various YouTube channels, going back to at least in this case of October 25th, 2012, which is when the Futuristic Hub channel was created. We contend that the evidence will overwhelmingly show that Mr. Martin created this Futuristic Hub channel on October 25th, 2012, and that he has continuously operated this channel the entire time up to the present. Although you may hear some evidence that uh, Ms. Bone created uh, the channel and the videos associated with it. We just do not believe it is so. The next uh, date of importance is April 19th, 2013. That's when Brian Martin married wife number one, uh, which is Chrissy Martin. Uh, after this point, Your Honor, uh, the evidence will show that my clients and Mr. Martin and another gentleman, Marco Prince, entered into an agreement to operate and own the video games channel. And the video games channel was the subject of the previous litigation. But I only say this, Your Honor, so you have an idea about how the parties came into a business relationship. Well, uh, in that federal court litigation, it involved fraud, conspiracy, and, and the alike causes of action, which resulted in a judgment against Mr. Martin and Mr. Princip for approximately $18,600,000. Also, another important date, Your Honor, is June 7th, 2016. That's the date 
that Brian Martin and Chrissy Martin formed Futuristic Hub LLC with the Texas Secretary of State. Why is that date important? Because, Your Honor, that was two months after the $18 million judgment in federal court. So this is the beginning of Brian Martin attempting to protect his assets, the videos, right? All right, so now we move on to uh, the fall of 2018. And this is when Holly Bone travels from the United Kingdom to Dallas to uh, see Mr. Martin physically for the first time. Uh, the evidence will show that uh, Ms. Bone, who was 12 years old at the time back in 2012, met Mr. Martin online. In 2012, Mr. Martin was approximately 27 years old. So they had an online, online relationship for approximately six years before Ms. Bone elected uh, to come to the United States in the fall of 2018. Also, Your Honor, what's going uh, on in the background here is after the federal court judgment of April uh, 2016, uh, Mr. Martin appealed it to the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. And in 2018, that appeal was still pending. December 31st, 2018 is another important date because that's the date that Chrissy Martin, wife number one, leaves Brian Martin for good. With that said, Chrissy Martin then files a divorce proceeding on January 10th, 2019 against Brian Martin. As I stated a moment ago, on January 16, 2019, the, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals affirms the federal court judgment. Uh, March 18, 2019, just two months after Chrissy Martin files the petition for divorce, uh, the divorce decree is signed by a Collin County judge. Oh. And then about three months later, June 4th, 2019, is when Brian Martin and Holly Bone marry. All right, so, Your Honor, we're, doing, we're going to fast forward to now the be, beginning of January 2020. This is important as it relates to the fraudulent transfer cause of action in this particular case. You're going to hear evidence that uh, Brian Martin obtained a Swiss bank account, which was in the name of Chrissy Martin from their divorce. And the proceeds from that Swiss bank account eventually made its way to Carolyn Martin. It's our opinion this was a way to defraud the judgment creditors. And you're going to hear a testimony that Carolyn Martin purchased a $340,000 house for the benefit of Holly Bone in January of 2020. And what's interesting about this particular fact, Your Honor, is that at this time, Brian Martin and Holly Bone have been married approximately six months. Holly Bone had met Miss Martin, maybe one time, talked her on the phone a couple times prior to this transaction occurring. Yet, Carolyn Martin purchased this house, and the deed was in the name of Holly Bone only and not her own son, Brian Martin. We think it's for obvious reasons. Again, Brian Martin does not want any assets in his name. Fast forward to August of 2020, Holly Bohm files a petition for divorce against Brian Martin. Ms. Bohm claims that the reason for the divorce was due to this was the first time that she discovered 
the federal court judgment against Brian Martin and it bothered her and she did not want to be married to him any longer. 10 days later on August 17, 2020, she files a notice of non-suit. And then just four days after that, Your Honor, on August 21st, 2020, you see that Brian Martin and Holly Bone enter into a post-marital agreement. This agreement is interesting, Your Honor, because uh, the alleged purpose of this agreement was for Holly Bone and Brian Martin to declare that all of the separate property that each owned prior to their marriage and subsequent to their marriage was going to be considered their separate property. And in this post-marital agreement, there's an exhibit A and B for Holly Bone and Brian Martin, which is supposed to contain the various separate property of each person. Now, Holly Bone is represented by an attorney, Your Honor, as it relates to this postmarital agreement. And what's interesting about this postmarital agreement, when you look at the Exhibit A for Holly Bone, because she's claiming in this lawsuit that she owns and created and started Futuristic Hub since 2012. Yet, Exhibit A does not include the Futuristic Hub channel or the videos associated with it. So one would have to wonder, why would that be? Well, we believe the evidence is going to show, Your Honor, that Brian Martin did not want the Futuristic Hub channel to be listed on Exhibit A, because then he would lose complete control of that channel and those videos if Holly Bone subsequently divorced him, which is certainly possible because she already filed a divorce petition one time. So then one would think, well, was the Futuristic Hub channel listed on Brian Martin's separate property, which would be Exhibit B, since we, we contend he created the channel in 2012 and all the videos thereafter. Well, interestingly, again, the Futuristic Hub channel was not contained on Exhibit B, which is part of this post-marital agreement. Why? It's obvious. Brian Martin did not want an agreement which confirmed that the Futuristic Hub channel was his separate property and subject to execution by the judgment creditors. So th this agreement is critical because it, it left ambiguity regarding the nature of the videos associated with the Futuristic Hub channel. We contend it was done intentionally. So Brian Martin <clears throat> and Holly Bone, for that matter, can argue whether it was his property or her property because there's not an agreement in writing which they both signed. Uh, and <clears throat> basically the argument would be that uh, depending upon what they were in and who they were with would determine how they were going to treat the videos associated with the Futuristic Hub channel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, and also, Your Honor, one thing I wanted to mention, when Brian Martin and Chrissy Martin divorced in March of 2019, the Futuristic Hub channel was referenced in that divorce decree. And it stated that Brian Martin was the sole owner and it was his separate property, the Futuristic Hub channel, which does confirm in that divorce decree that he was the owner of the Futuristic Hub channel and all the videos and all the money associated with it. <clears throat> August 25th, 2020, Your Honor, that's the date uh, that Holly Bone contends that she returned back to the United Kingdom because she was homesick. We contend she returned back to the United Kingdom because the judgment creditors were starting to heat up the collection of their $18,600,000 judgment against Brian Martin. 
September 23rd, 2020, Holly Bone creates Wild MC Limited. Wild MC Limited, Your Honor, is a United Kingdom entity where, according to the documents, Miss Bone is the sole shareholder and sole board of director of this company. We contend that <clears throat> this was just another subterfuge. Uh, Ms. Bone and Mr. Martin are trying to shield the videos and the channel from the judgment creditor. It kind of reminds me of that movie with, uh, with uh, Tom Hanks, or where he plays that FBI officer and Leonardo DiCaprio, catch me if you can. You know, it seems like in this case, Brian Martin and Holly Bone are always two steps ahead of us. But fortunately, we're here today uh, because we have our day in court to show we finally have caught them. October 15, 2020, Your Honor. I'm sure you remember that day. That was the day that you entered a temporary injunction in this case. And we believe the evidence is going to show that subsequently to you entering that temporary injunction, Ms. Bone made multiple violations to that injunction by transferring videos, transferring money, withdrawing money from bank accounts, <clears throat> selling that Frisco piece of property that uh, I talked about earlier, all in violation of the temporary injunction. And I don't think I have to go into Brian Martin and his violations of the temporary injunction. Obviously, there were a litany of them, which caused him to ultimately be found in contempt of court and his pleadings be stricken in this particular case. <clears throat> November 25th, 2020. It's another interesting date, Your Honor, because that's the date that uh, Holly Bone signed a warranty deed selling the Frisco property. What is uh, a little odd about this sales transaction, Your Honor, is in January 2020, Carolyn Martin wired almost $340,000 to Holly Bone to buy the Frisco property. Yet 11 months later, November 2020, Holly Bone sells the property for $250,000, a $90,000 loss. We contend it was just a way to funnel money without it making it through the judgment creditors. December 22nd, 2020. <clears throat> this was a date, Your Honor, that Holly Bone violated the temporary injunction again. And she did it by uploading the videos from the Futuristic Cub channel to the Wildcraft channel in violation of the court's order. <clears throat> and why did she do it? It's obvious. Because in December 2020 was a time frame that Google received the writ of garnishment because the, it, was, it was a collection process by the judgment creditors to start collecting on this monetization of revenue from the Futuristic Hub channel. And as you know, there was around $290,000 in the court's registry from that action. Well, Mr. Martin, Ms. Bohm, did not want to continue to lose out on that monthly monetization revenue from the Futuristic Hub channel. So they decided to upload the same videos which are on the Futuristic Hub channel to the Wildcraft channel, which was already in existence. It contained other videos. So the evidence is going to show, Your Honor, that the 78 video videos which are on the Futuristic Hub channel are now on the Wildcraft channel. So at least now, Mr. Martin and Ms. Bone can still make money from Google. So from around January of 2021 to the present, they have made approximately $600,000, which to my understanding <clears throat> is a, a fair representation of, of that amount of money um, that they have received, which was the reason why in February of 2022 that the judgment creditors 
filed that application for temporary restraining order and temporary injunction against the Wildcraft Channel because of all of the money that was being received by Mr. Martin and Ms. Bone from the Wildcraft Channel videos, a lot of them, were the exact same videos that Google was monetizing on the Futuristic Hub channel. <clears throat> Your Honor, at the end of the day, the judgment creditors see the case like this. Mr. Martin is the puppeteer in this in entire orchestration that he has. He, he did it through Chrissy Martin. You're going to hear evidence, Your Honor, where Brian Martin claims at one moment he was the owner of Futuristic Hub and at another moment, Chrissy Martin was the owner of Futuristic Hub. Then you're going to hear uh, after he divorces Chrissy Martin and marries Holly Bone, that now Holly Bone is the owner of the videos and the channel. Uh, the reality is Mr. Martin wants to control the channel, the videos, we believe he's been doing it in this particular case ever since October, 2012, and he's continuing to do it. And judgment creditors are requesting your honor that after you hear all of the evidence today, that you order a permanent injunction against Brian Martin and Holly Bone for the Futuristic Cub channel, the Wildcraft channel, the Top, Trend, Top Trends channel, Blocktastic, Trandall, Creamworks animation channel, because we believe all these channels and the videos associated with it are still being operated by Brian Martin. And even though you may hear evidence that, oh no, that's not true. It's really Holly Bone's ownership of some of these channels. Um, Your Honor, we believe that the evidence is not going to show any of that. And lastly, Your Honor, I do want to say uh, we also are going to have some testimony from an expert. And this expert, Mr. Ethan Asios Posantis, is going to testify that as an expert of Cinema 4D software, he has reviewed approximately 120 videos. 80 videos, which I've been discussing, which were on the Futuristic Cub channel and then uploaded to the Wildcraft channel, plus the, another 40 videos, which are, on, are currently on the Wildcraft channel. And his opinion, although Miss Bone does have some animation experience that she and she certainly could have possibly been involved with some of the creation of these videos, he is going to tell this court without any doubt whatsoever that Ms. Bone does not have the experience to create the vast majority of uh, the animation that you see in all of the videos, which further supports the fact that Ms. Bone is not the owner, she's not the creator of these videos. We believe it is Brian Martin. It's always been Brian Martin. And it always will be Brian Mark. Thank you. All right. Is there anything you need me to screen share, Mr. DeBose? Um, I don't think so. Okay. You can proceed, Mr. DeBose. This case is very much a story about Holly Bone, who is a gifted, um, creative, charming young woman, very articulate, um, very intelligent. But she has uh, autism and her childhood, as her father testified, was quite miserable. Her mother uh, abandoned the family when Holly was four years old. Her older sister, I think, was about nine at that time. And her father, and she saw her mother once in the next year, and that's all that she saw for the rest of her life. Her father uh, decided to continue to work and take care of his kids. Now, in Britain, that decision is a lot more difficult to make than in the United States because their system of welfare is so sufficient 
that there are families that have been on the dole generations long. But being the kind of guy he was, he's a, he's a man who works with his hands, automotive mechanic, had the same job for 32 years. He's the chief mechanic at the place that he works at, and he wanted to keep going on that. Um, he, when he dropped off Holly and she was going to school, he would look back and he would see how miserable she was. He could not stand to look at her face. It was so filled with sorrow. Because in school, she was bullied uh, and she was disciplined for things that she didn't understand, which is typical of autistic people. They do not understand societal norms. Um, and she continued to be miserable until when she was 12 years old, she started making animated videos. And her dad was there. He saw her making them. He saw her. She told him that where she was putting them up was futuristic hub. So he spent money to get more expensive computers that she could use to do this. And you know, before she had started making animation, she lived in her, in her bedroom, basically. She didn't go out. She only had one friend from school, which, again, is not atypical of autistic people. Um, and uh, now she was happy. And it was the first time her father had seen her happy and wanted to keep her happy. Um, he wasn't terribly interested in the videos that she made, but he saw that they were, you know, that they were, they were being made and his, his daughter was happy. Uh, she's a very talented, very bright young woman. Um, you are going to see in, the, in this case, uh, videos that um, Ms. Bone created uh, for the, examination of the expert in which she sets out uh, a, a, a number of different tasks she does on the computer and the joy that you see on her face when she's doing it is, is she's obviously completely enjoying it. You look at it as a grandfather. I look at it as a very happy grandchild doing something that she really enjoys doing. Um, the reason she started doing this she was a minecraft game player um uh, and the um on on that site people can meet together form groups apparently i don't know about these games but i understand that you can get groups playing the game against one another when, with one another and uh, in order to enable that there is a site where People communicate back and forth. At this time, Brian was um, managing various um, channels on YouTube. Um, his gift is SEO as you know, search in engine optimization for people who post videos on YouTube channels. And we will have uh, two witnesses. Um, Kyle, um, what is it, Kyle Lomax and Cameron Grant, both of whom uh, worked with him. And he increased the number, substantially the number of people who were looking at their, uh, at their sites, which increased the income that they were making. But that's what he did with a number of channels. He realized back in 2012 that Minecraft was really a big deal. Lots of people were playing the game, uh, particularly young people. Um, but he had the idea that animating with the blocktastic style, all blockheaded people, um, would be very sellable on. Uh, on YouTube. And so he was looking around for somebody to do that kind of animation. And he met Holly Bo, um, didn't know how old she was, uh, recognized that she was 
was bright, interesting, articulate. Um, they were uh, communicating, uh, not face to face, obviously, it was simply communications on the internet. And once she started doing things, uh, he started helping her out. One of the things she couldn't do on her computer was the final stage of a uh, video. And the final stage is um, called rendering. But rendering is a process that takes a big, powerful computer. It doesn't take any creative powers. The creative powers are all up to that point. Uh, rendering takes what has been created and turns it into something, into one of the various forms that um, can be used to post a video uh, on YouTube or have it for any other purpose. You basically take the prepared materials you've got, stick it in the computer, turn the thing on, and it just takes time to do. It takes time and energy and power. Um, for a long time, um, Holly didn't have computer enough to do that. Uh, she only, uh, she would prepare it and then Brian would do the rendering. And in fact, one of our witnesses, Kyle Lomax, was in the room when uh, Brian was talking with Holly on the phone and doing the rendering of her video. Uh, back in I believe it was June of 2014. Uh, so um, Holly was very shy. She didn't want to be known. She didn't want to be it, to be known publicly that she was the creator of these various. Um, uh, videos um, uh, you can get people can attack you rather nastily online and she didn't want to be exposed to that and I think I may have mentioned to the court my own personal knowledge about this I had an autistic nephew and uh, I had lunch with him when he was 26 in California I could see he lacked some social skills uh, but he seen, had a college degree and had a job. Three weeks after I had that meeting with him, he was harassed on the internet to such an extent that at three o'clock in the morning, he lay his head on a railroad track and was decapitated. So people who are autistic are extremely vulnerable. And uh, Brian recognized that vulnerability. And he, when he was managing her, he was... He, she never gave him the password to get into her account. Um, it was only she who had that. And what he did, but she didn't have an AdSense account. Um, now, I think your honor knows about the YouTube partner program. If you get to a certain level of people who are going to your channel, then YouTube offers to that person, or they may be, uh, the opportunity to become a YouTube partner. What that means is that the, if one becomes a YouTube partner, they are agreeing that Google can post advertisements on their channel. And uh, YouTube then calculates uh, how much uh, advertising money is coming in, not to the channel overall, but to each video. Each video, there's uh, YouTube keeps track of that exactly how much advertising money is due to that channel, which is a question of how many people went to visit that video in the period of time uh, in which the payment is made. I think they make monthly payments. So um, she, uh, she allowed Brian to use his AdSense account for that. She, wasn't, she was just doing it because it was fun. 
she was a kid. She was not in her majority, you know, early teenager. She just did it because she enjoyed it. And she believed, and I think that's probably correct, that Brian was doing all this work for her, giving her all this assistance. He should reap whatever benefits there were. Uh, there are no records that I know of of how much uh, those, her channel and her videos uh, produced um, at a certain time. Um, and, and you know, you should know that Ms. Bowen actually lives in two worlds that are not quite real. The first one is totally imaginary. Uh, she escapes into that at moments, and sometimes you'll see her very focused that she's there. And the other world that she's in is her world of videos. It's very, it's probably more real to her than real people around her. Uh, in that video system, her main character, Steve, main male character, is her husband. And he voices that. That's the one contribution he makes to all the videos is he voices the male characters. Now, um, she, um, there have been talk about uh, pornographic videos that were on the site. And you're gonna see little snippets of it. They're not, pornographic in any serious sense, the little block figures that are making motions will show a little snap of that. Um, and she made them, you know, uh, when she was like 13 years old, because to her, they were amusing. And, you know, I think that's not unusual for a 13 year old who first learns about sexuality to think that the whole thing is kind of strange and funny. Um, but uh, one of the things that happened, not immediately uh, because of those videos, is she began to be seriously attacked on, uh, on YouTube. And the, there was an attack on uh, Futuristic Hub in particular. Um, she was completely out of control. This, this frightened her, intimidated her. And what Brian did is he went online to say that he was the animator to take off from her the, uh, the, the force of the, uh, uh, the attacks that were being made. Now, um, at this time, again, Holly was a minor and she wasn't considering this as a source of income. Um, there came a time when, uh, when she decided that she should get more professional uh, assistance with her channels. And in April of 2019, she signed up with a multi-channel network called Freedom Family Limited. It's a Hong Kong corporation that operates out of Dubai. Operating out of Dubai means if you do it right, you don't pay taxes to anybody anywhere. But in any case, that um, going to them increased the income of uh, Futuristic Hub and to some extent, the smaller channel of uh, Creamworks Animation, where the first month she was in that system, which was um, April of 2019, uh, she was making $21,000 a month. And then after 19 months, it was up to 100,000 dollars a year and at that point the channel was shut down and she has received nothing from that but they were very very effective in getting that um, that income so um and why did she do it then well she decided she was no longer a minor and she wanted to be more professional in her business um and um you know both um kyle Lomax and Cameron Grant will testify that, you know, this was really what Brian did very well, but it was what uh, Freedom Family did a great deal better. Now, um, the chronology that the um, plaintiffs have presented has, has some flaws in it. The first time that Brian and 
Holly met was not when she came to the United States, but earlier than the date they have, he went to um, visit her in, in Britain. Now, one of the things that had happened in, in his life is once the judgment was entered against him, uh, his, it destroyed his marriage. Um, they no longer lived together as man and wife. They lived together as roommates. And um, his, his wife was terrified of the fact that perhaps her assets might be uh, taken. And she was a very active YouTuber herself. She had seven channels that she created. She had her own income. And she took her income and put it in a Swiss bank account. Uh, she has said, oh, she didn't know anything about it. There's a document creating the LLC by which that was done, which she signed, which we has already been admitted in evidence. And she then, you know, and, and, and they point out that in uh, the divorce decree between Chrissy and Brian, that account was awarded to him. But by the time that account had been awarded to him, Chrissy had sent the contents of that account to uh, Brian's mother. There was, their divorce decree was entered on 318, 2019. And there, is, there are three transmissions from the Swiss bank account into Brian's mother's account. Uh, one for $102,000 January 22nd, one for $249,000 on January 22nd, and one for uh, $28,000 on February 1st, all coming from Thorazil Enterprises, which is an entity that was owned solely by Chrissy. So the money that um, Brian's mother had was money not from him, but from Chrissy. And it was her money and she did with it what she wanted. And she decided when she Mr. heard Mr. that. Let me ask you this. So you're saying that Mr. Martin's ex-wife transferred money to his mother so that his new wife could get a house? No, uh, but he's not quite sure what he said, but he, they, were, they were talking, he and Chrissy, and he said, you know, my mother has nothing to retire on. So she got uh, a total of, I think it was, it was much more than what was paid for the house. And that was, again, that was uh, back in uh, January and February 2019. She didn't buy the house until a year later. So, you know, it was her money and she did with it as she wished. Um, so, uh, and, and, and Christy has um, it, some of the things that she said in the uh, temporary injunction here, are just false. We have the documents that prove the falseness of, of them. Um, in any case, um, To uh, go back a little bit, um, as I said, um, Brian's first, uh, first time Brian met Holly was when he came to visit her in 2018. Um, and at that time, his, his marriage was not in any functional sense a marriage. Uh, it had been non-functional for at least two and a half years. Um, and he went as a friend, you know, he, he worked with her. Um, uh, and when he did find out about her age, which is a couple of years in, he was astounded at how young she was because she was so articulate, so intelligent. Um, and I think your honor will see that when she testifies. Um, then after that, well, it, during that visit is when 
the attraction really occurred when they were face to face. And they spent a few weeks together and then uh, Holly came over in uh, 2018 to visit, uh, did not stay that time, went back to Great Britain and then uh, came a second time uh, to uh, the United States, uh, at which time uh, they were married and uh, were living in an apartment. And uh, his mother had heard from him that it was not a great apartment, particularly for uh, for Holly, because it was very noisy and just it was very disturbing to her. You know, they were right on the street. And he, he told his mother that he was in the process, that Holly was in the process of buying a house. And um, his mother then apparently responded to that and said, well, I'll buy that house. As Brian will tell you, his, his mother is a very giving mother. She gives out her money. She's uh, done some very, ni very nice things for um, her other son, Kevin. Um, in any case. Um, Mr. Guess, I want to make sure I understand the, the, the two sides position on this. So the defendant, the plaintiffs are arguing that the money for the house was given to Miss Martin by Brian, her son. And you're claiming and that eventually went to Brian's new wife, but you're saying that it actually came from his ex-wife, and then she gave it to her former mother-in-law to give to the new the new wife. Am I understanding your position on this versus their position? Well, uh, that well, we got the documents that show it, but she was giving to his mother. I don't know for what purpose. Um, because the, at the time that Chris, she, the ex-wife was giving money to the mother-in-law. Yeah. At, and it was prior, the first it was prior to the divorce. It was uh, several, it was about a half a year prior to the marriage of Holly and, uh, and Brian. So, you know, why she did it, um, you can ask her, I, I don't know if you'll get a straight answer, but you can ask her, I'll, I'll certainly ask her, um, but I, I, I don't know what, what was in it um, and why, why she did it. Uh, I, can only, I can only speculate, and I, I, I think we'll find it. But the documents are very clear on this. The document which creates this Thoris' venture is, has her name on it. And it is, when you look at the bank account, the incoming mo money comes from this Thoris' uh, ventures which her di divorce decree says is entirely in her name. In any case, um, that's uh, one thing. We, we, we have a number, a, a, a great number of documents that show that Google recognized that Holly was what they would call the owner of uh, the channel. We have a huge number, a uh, massive number of their documents and what we're going to do is we're going to search those documents for the name of Holly. When we do that, you will find there are three entries. Each one shows that Holly Bone is the owner of the three channels that are before the court that Holly is concerned with. Futuristic Hub, Creamworks Animation, and Wildcraft. All those three, their documents say. Plus, there are lots of communications between Google uh, and Holly because she is recognized as what they call the owner. Now, we know that it is not ownership in any sense that you and I will recognize. It is a license. All it is is a license to post things uh, on YouTube. And uh, you know their terms and conditions make it clear there is no ownership. There are no contracts. In other words, while they do pay money to people who allow advertisements on their channels, uh, they are not obligated to do so. They can just yank it. Uh, you look into the terms and conditions, really, basically when they, whenever they want it. Um, and they did it in, in this case. 
they they froze Holly's account, uh, which caused uh, we know from what we were reported by uh, Mr. Hurst that what used to be $100,000 a month dropped down to $22,000 because uh, what keeps the, the, the growth of these channels, and by the way, you know, under Freedom Family, uh, Holly went up to 3.35 million subscribers. So that means that every video she posted Every one of those subscribers gets noticed that there is a new video and they would flock to the site. And that flocking means a lot of little things that go on to the register uh, of, uh, of YouTube. Uh, but there's lots of documentaries. We have records. She has created 551 videos. Everyone has gone through um, an entity called um, uh, Aegis, and we have records of those. They're massive. Um, and you will see every one of those because that's how she puts it onto, um, the, uh, on, on, onto YouTube. Um, and it started out Aegis. Uh, she got on uh, late in 2019 because... Um, Freedom Family put her on. Uh, but what she does when she is putting on, putting up any video is she gives all the information to Aegis, who then says, this is Holly Bones' creation. And they then send it out and post it on the internet. Now, uh, there have been charges that she's been violating the temporary injunction. First of all, she didn't know about the temporary injunction until long, long after uh, it was entered. Uh, she was unaware of the proceedings. As your Honor knows, she was not served. The, the, your, your order allowing uh, a special uh, service uh, of, of the materials, it was left at her home, which was vacant several months. So she, she had no knowledge of what was going on. The only time she really started to pay attention was when suddenly she lost her, her channels and she sent emails to uh, Mr. Uh, is it shot? Uh, I can't remember. Shot mayor. Um, no, shot Lando. Uh, who said, you know, I can't really help you. Um, but it was then that she, uh, she contacted me. And, uh, or in that, it was that which motivated her to come to me. Um, she was unaware of these. And also, you know, your honor's temporary injunction only speaks to the income from the channels. It does not speak to no order until I think this last one <clears throat> speaks to the videos themselves. It is not like she took them down from one of the channels she uses. She has copies of everything she's made and she was reposting them on a different channel, which she's entirely, it's not violating any order to do that. The orders did not cover the videos. Um, now, as you know, the channel is owned by a corporation in Great Britain. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that uh, is a, a serious uh, impediment to a ruling against that, um, uh, that, that entity. It's paying tax on that. Um, and I'll make an appropriate motion at an appropriate time um, but I think the court is overstepping uh, jurisdictional barriers to do that. But in any case, um, there is um, uh, the, the expert uh, that they are going to present has never given expert testimony before, has never given any opinion to anybody 
that based on what they have seen the person discuss about how they do uh, things in their animation um, allows him to determine whether that person is capable of doing animation. At his uh, deposition, um, we stopped for a period of about an hour and a quarter where we played um, Miss Bones' uh, instructive video. She says, here's how I do these things. And you'll see her working all over the board. Um, when she was being quizzed in her deposition, uh, she didn't have all that in front of her. She doesn't have all memorized what the names of all the things she's using. And you'll see that when she, you see her doing her animation, she pulls up the screen and says, oh, here the thing is, that's what I mean. You know, she is not doing professional uh, animation. She does it because it's something she enjoys and something that she has some skill in doing. Um, you know, the, the part, the person who has lost the most in this is, is Holly Bond. She's lost income, which uh, she may never recover because that rising slope of what's happening with um, Futuristic Hub, that's been cut off. Um, we don't know how much money uh, Google is making on that, what they're taking, but they are, um, and who knows what would have happened with And the bonds in the two TROs are $5,000, $10,000. That's her only resource. And so she's written that off. Uh, but I think, Your Honor, we'll see. Mr. Well, DeVos, you need to kind of finish up. Uh, okay. I'm giving uh, you guys time limits, but uh, I think you would take this <laughs> Yeah, long, I, so. I think I, okay. Uh, you will see that all the evidence, there is no evidence of anybody who's seen Brian, uh, any credible evidence, seen him animating. Um, and all the evidence shows that Holly Bone did this from day one. We have people from day one and thereafter. And that's really the heart of our case. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Call your first witness.